What up, though, Meerkat? And if you haven't played these fighting games on your PlayStation Vita, then you are sorely missing out. As a Vita lover and an FGC diehard, you know I had to revisit these games here on my channel. Now, there are plenty of options, but what if you wanted more? What if you wanted to use your Vita to practice for matches against other people? Are there even any fighting games on the Vita that are still worth playing today? Well, that's what I'm here to answer for you. I found four fighting games on PlayStation Vita that are still relevant in 2022. That means you can use your Vita to practice your setups, your defense, your reactions, and of course, your Doctor Doom loops. But before we get into it, I just wanna make it clear that you're probably not gonna wanna play these games online on your Vita, because as much as I love the Vita, for these games, Wi-Fi is a definite no. So for the sake of transparency, I'm capturing these games on my PC, but rest assured, I still believe that these games on Vita is a good way to get in your practice and really get into the games that you really aren't sure about committing to 100%. Oh, and I'm gonna throw in a bonus fifth game for you, just because I like you. Let's go. So number one on the list is Street Fighter Cross Tekken, a 2v2 fighter that brings together the premier fighting game series of both Capcom and Bandai Namco. The Vita version of this game is pretty much on par with the PC version except for the fact that it does include the PlayStation exclusive characters that can also be found in the PS3 version. Hell, the game even retains its signature art style although a little bit fuzzier. And you'll find that that's a common thing with the games on this list. They all run at 60 frames per second, but I see this as a testament, not only to the skills of the developers who ported these games to this system, but also of the raw power of the system itself. I mean, 60 frames per second is essential for fighting games. And the fact that they managed to get these games to run at 60 frames per second, I think is, low-key mind-blowing. But let's get back to Street Fighter Cross Tekken, shall we? This game is just as loved for its deep technical gameplay as it is maligned for its gem system upon launch. And there are actually two reasons why I put this game first on the list. Number one, this game, while playable in 2022, has some Windows-related baggage that makes it really, really annoying to set up. Number two, is that you actually can't buy the game. It's not available on Steam, it's been delisted since December of 2021, which means if you don't already have a copy of the game, then you're not gonna be playing it. If you do have a copy, you can very much download it and play it once you go through this. But for the people who don't already own a copy of Street Fighter Cross Tekken on the PC, you're pretty much limited in your options or so you would think, because I believe that the PlayStation Vita is definitely a viable way to play this game. It'll allow you to practice your setups, your block strings, your tag mechanics, and get into the game. Oh my God. And then when the game makes its inevitable return to Steam, you can hop online and start dominating people who get in your face. Or you can get washed like I did. Why is that a cross up? That is fucked up. That's a fucked up movie. Either way, I hope you're having fun. Second game on the list is Guilty Gear X2 Accent Core Plus R which is a mouthful of a title, and this is my third time attempting to say it. Apparently that title has a meaning, but I seriously cannot be bothered to find out what it is. Now, I think Plus R is very good, but I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. This game is not fucking around. I wouldn't recommend this as anybody's first, second, or even 10th fighting game. But for anybody who is willing to take on that challenge, I believe that the Vita version of this game is very, very good. In fact, it's pretty much a perfect port of the Steam version. Except for the fact that Steam got a rollback netcode in 2020, let's go! And outside of the Steam version, this is my favorite version of Plus R to play. You'll find this game has a diverse range of characters fitting a bunch of different archetypes. There's a lot, a lot of depth and so much experimentation. You have a pirate with a heart of gold. You have a robot version of another character who's constantly on the verge of exploding himself. You have a goth girl with a sentient key. And then you have Testament, who's a bitch, seriously. I respect Testament players, but also fuck all of you. On the whole, Guilty Gear Accent Core Plus R is a very good game and it's a very good port for the Vita. Definitely try it out. So, do you like 2D animation? Do you like waifus? Do you like very deep fighting game experiences? Well, you will get all of that and more in Skullgirls, second encore. The gameplay of Skullgirls is heavily based upon that of Marvel vs. Capcom 2 but instead of being a four button fighter, it's a six button fighter. Combos in this game are crazy, the mix ups are insane, the characters are gorgeously rendered in 2D hand drawn animation, and the music slaps. Being part of the Skullgirls community is like being part of a never ending party, and I swear. 
I'm so excited for Black Dahlia to come out in the new version of Skullgirls that I can barely contain myself. But for those of you who haven't played the series and maybe are looking for a way to get into it, maybe on the cheap, then definitely play the Vita version because it's pretty much identical to the version of the game that's out right now. The Steam version has had a few updates since 2014 when Second Iron Core came out, but the Vita version of the game is a very good way to get into the mechanics and the systems and learn how they work, learn your team compositions and you know, just give it a try. Skullgirls gameplay is so phenomenal, guys. I'm telling you, I have literally spent hours and hours on training mode, looking for dope shit, finding new combos on which to style on my opponents, new team compositions, finding out which characters work best with one another, deciding whether to have a team of three, team of two, or just to run solo and be a character purist. All these things are available. This is such a deep game. And the fact that they were able to fit it on the PlayStation Vita, I think is, Tremendous. Give it a shot. You won't regret it unless your mom catches you playing it. So you'll never guess what happened. First, my camera dies. Then my computer crashes as it's recording my audio. Clearly, it's a plot by Sony to keep us from begging for a Vita 2. This time, stay dead. Next up, we have the Creme de la Creme, one of the upper echelon fighting games and one of my personal favorites overall. That is Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Initially released at the tail end of 2011, this game features 3v3 combat and it meshes together Marvel and Capcom characters. I mean, obviously. There's nothing I can say about this game that hasn't already been said. There's no amount of praise that I can give that hasn't already been doled out in spades. But I'm telling you, if you've never played Marvel 3, play it. And if you have a PS Vita and nothing else, Definitely play it. Ultimate Marvel 3, in my opinion, is one of the best fighting games ever made. The gameplay, the presentation, the roster, the music, it's all very, very incredibly good. And the crazy thing is, like Skullgirls, Marvel 3 in 2022 is still getting new characters added to it on a regular basis, albeit in an unofficial way through mods, which are of course PC exclusive, but I feel like the PlayStation Vita is a good way to get into the basic mechanics of Marvel 3. Not only getting used to the 3v3 combat and certain combos, but also learning your team compositions and figuring out how you want to play this game. And by the way, as far as I know, this is the only legal way to Swiss cheese a person. All right, last game. Under Night in Birth is a fantastic fighting game, and it's actually one of my favorite games on Steam. However, it's last on the list because of one simple reason. It has no rollback net code. The knowledgeable among you may be saying, Meerkat, you just got through praising Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. That doesn't have rollback. And yeah, you're correct. It doesn't have rollback. But I feel like Undernight in Birth is a little bit more egregious due to the simple fact that it's more reliant upon block strings and pressure than Marvel vs. Capcom 3. However, yeah. I can't excuse Marvel 3 not having rollback netcode, especially since Street Fighter Cross Tekken, which was released less than a year after, and also Street Fighter 3 Third Strike Online, which was released less than a year prior, both have rollback netcode. So what gives Capcom? But yeah, I feel like a fuck up in Undernight in Birth is, it feels a bit more egregious. It feels a bit more unfair. Both of these games can be played on Parsec anyway, so it's not like it really matters, but Undernight in Birth is a very fun game. And it's actually the newest fighting game that I was able to find in my research. So definitely give it a try. I'm not gonna straight up recommend it, but if you're curious, definitely look into it. And there you have it, four or five, depending on your perspective, fighting games for the PS Vita that'll help you level up. And I know for a fact that I left off some awesome fighting games that are also on this platform. Therefore, if you have a fighting game that's not on this list that you love to play on your Vita, leave it down in the comments. All answers below and I will check those comments and I'll be responding to those. Make sure you subscribe to the channel subscribe make sure you like this video subscribe to the channel and i am gonna go ask warlord madara for a rematch i'm out this gives you an opportunity to find out what kind of game is marvel ultimate damn it fuck shit stop with the ultimate marvel marvel ultimate fucking stop it